So I saw you drove your bike here today. Oh yeah, any chance I get, you know, it's it's fun to be on the bike. But it's like today, or oh, the last few days really, has been so Yeah, I'm kind of shocked you did that. It's just, you can barely even see where you're going. Yeah, no, the visibility was affected. We took our dogs out for a walk yesterday and I had a massive headache even from just yeah, it's our brief nasty. walk. Yeah, yeah, it's nasty. It's kind of actually scary to figure out what's going to happen to wine yeah. in the next, uh, yeah. next few years. I read today that a bunch of um, like well-known bars and restaurants and wine bars in Oregon are doing a bunch of fundraisers for the harvest workers to get them like nice masks mm. that will filtrate some of that smoke because yeah. it's really bad. But even there. for the wine itself, you know, with all that smoke in California and oh, Oregon, yeah. I mean, it's it might just be the, like the, the, grapes the grapes themselves because yeah. it's yep. harvest time and there's all that smoke around, yeah. so smoke taint. We'll be able we'll to see remember. What happens. You'll Just be able to recognize those wines as like, blind ooh, tasting ooh, right that away. Is, that uh, is 2020. 2020. <laughs> How fitting for the year. It's, it smells like smoke. <laughs> 2020, the year like of oven fire. That's not funny. That's really bad. There are really bad fires. Yeah. But also, 2020 it has gone up in flames. Yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> that's why we're here. We're drinking wine and we're selling wine help us forget about 2020 and Drink, drinking it too uh, yeah drinking wine just to forget just to forget just it's a good to way to forget this year. yeah it needs the oven anyway um also on top of that i know a lot of people have games like that quarantine 15 or whatever so there are people on diets um we're here to tell you the truth about wine and all of the sugar in it and the amount of carbs you'll find in wine and all that um nutritional facts that aren't on the labels uh, and actually that wine is one of the better drinks that you can be drinking on on your diets always. So it makes me happy. Yeah, it makes my liquid diet make sense. <laughs> exactly. I've been on the liquid diet for a long, long time. Yeah. <laughs> and so far it's been working for yeah, me. Yeah, good, good. But then it's again, I've been on a seafood diet for a bit too and you know, that I see food, I eat it. Okay, I did well. not see that coming. How Seems to work for me. It's coming. just... Uh, I was like, is that a French thing? <laughs> yeah, it's a seafood diet. See it? Eat it. Perfect, Don't yeah. Know. Same, same. Um, so, re I mean, really, like, you know, people think that wine is kind of a bad thing when you're on a diet. Um, yes and no. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on the diet. Some diets actually let you drink wine and yep. alcohol in general, uh, like the keto diet. Yep. I think you're familiar with it. Yes, I am. Uh, yep. I mean, not you personally, but you know somebody yeah. who does yes. that. Uh, all the fries are delicious, right? Yeah, fries are delicious. Yeah. Yes, and then yes. <laughs> and so, really, what you're after, you know, the, the the bad thing on those diets is basically the amount of sugar that you consume. Yeah. And so people think, okay, well, wine, you know, there's it's grapes, so it's a lot of sugar. Well, there's a whole kind of uh, transformation that happens to mm -hmm. grapes when you turn them into wine. And that happens with fermentation. So basically, you, the sugar that's contained in the grapes will actually turn into alcohol with the introduction of yeast yeah. and it releasing CO2. Exactly, yeah. it's it, it. it. Turns it into alcohol. And so really, when you're on a diet, you can still drink some wines in moderation. Um, and it's basically, you, you have to kind of stay with wines that are on the dry side of things. Correct, yeah. So traditionally speaking, it seems like Europe in general has a tendency to be a little bit on the drier side mm -hmm. of things. Um, you look at Italy, you look at France, you know, very often their wines are just a lot more um, acidity driven. driven. Yeah. And yeah. usually kind of a little bit lower alcohol, yep. but they're also picked earlier. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the reason why they pick it earlier is because there's a little bit less sugar in the grapes at the time they pick it and then you don't have like those massive kind of alcohol yeah. levels and you still have acidity and you still have the balance so keeping those breaks in balance is really very important mm -hmm. into making wines that have like you know um just a whole story to tell yeah not just like boom in your face big food, yeah. big sugar yeah consumer friendly uh, consumer <laughs> friendly so uh so for this tasting i stayed in europe just because of um what the norm is. Mm -hmm. uh, that said, you know, you have grapes like Chardonnay, you have grapes like Cabernet, Merlot, that has a tendency to be on the drier side anyways. Uh -huh. 
If you're on a diet, some of the grapes you want to kind of avoid are basically the Syrah, Grenache, Zinfandel because they kind of drive up the alcohol yeah. level quite a bit. They, mm -hmm. they have a tendency to be like extremely kind of high in sugar content, yeah, yeah. which is why you can get those they really get those high. those qualities. Exactly, which is why you can get those really high yeah, alcohol yeah. contents as well. So that said, let's just go ahead and get started with our first yeah, one tonight. Absolutely. Uh, which is a... Uh, also, Michael... is Michael with Barique um, pouring for us and then again my name is Carrie with Tastings. I forgot to do the intro earlier. So now rude. it's later. So rude <laughs> but I guess you know better late than never. Better late than never. Because a lot of people but don't know me. I was yet. late today so <laughs> at least I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, our first wine, I'm not going to mention you were late because I'm not sure. <laughs> Well, I can't mess with that. So. <laughs> uh, so, our first wine for tonight is a Cremant de Bourgogne. Yeah, this and is cool. It's the Prosper Mofu. It's a uh, sparkling, so it's a, it's a rose made in the traditional method uh, in Burgundy. So, Cremant de Bourgogne. It is uh, a family, well, it was a family owned winery and then it's changed hands over the, the years, but it's, uh, it's started in 1860 in uh, the town of Santony and okay. it is yeah so I mean there's a little mm -hmm. bit of history yeah. just a couple hundred years one well, not quite but and um, the blend on that is um, majority of Pinot Noir with some Chardonnay and some Gamay um, the main point about this particular wine for what we're trying to show tonight is that it is a brute yeah brute in the sparkling world meaning that it is going to be on the drier side of mm -hmm. things and that's kind of what you're looking for when you're on one of those diets. Yeah. More than the liquid and it's diet. a rosé too, but it's still a brew, so a don't be scared. So the rosé <laughs> is going to give that sensation of like um, a little bit more sweetness mm -hmm. because you get more fruit. Yeah. That said, it is still a brew, so yeah. the dosage is very low in sugar and you're going to get a finished product that's going to be on the And what does side. dosage mean? So the dosage is actually what you put in the bottle to start yeah. the second fermentation. So it's a blend of sugar and yeast. But you introduce in the bottle and then you just cap it and that sugar and yeast coming in contact with the wine will actually start a second fermentation mm -hmm. in the bottle which is the traditional method the method that's actually adopted in champagne mm -hmm. so that's what that is uh, so brute is where you want to be or you can also look at ultra brute or yep. extra, extra brute uh, but if you see like dry and don't ask me how it works dry extra dry then just stay away from it if you're on one of those diets, it's going to yeah. be sweeter. Okay. So, brute is kind of like the majority of the sparkling you'll find yeah. out there. Yeah, so. and this is also really cool too because it's a sparkling out of Burgundy and I don't see that very often. I don't see a ton of them. You don't see a ton of them. I mean, yeah. it's uh, it's definitely just more into like that, um, um, you know, I mean, every region makes a sparkling basically in France. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Give or take. Um, but. You look at Burgundy, and Burgundy is known for their Chardonnay and their Pinot Noir, mm -hmm. and so you don't see a lot of sparkling. That's just kind of more for them to consume. Yeah. And uh, but you see a few. And here we have one. You know, so for you to consume. And here it is, and it's so rosé, and it's fantastic as well. Yeah, it's, it's really good. You know. Yeah, I love this. Definitely, I will be picking some of this up. Um, I love that it has Gamay in it also. I think Which, that's a you fun know, little. You'd think Gamay and Beaujolais. Beaujolais, yeah. But Beaujolais technically is part it's of Burgundy, Burgundy, so Burgundy. it's kind of fun to find yeah. it in there as I well. I love it. Yeah, so. I think that's a super cool addition. It's a really cool wine. Tiny history there. Family owned and it's dry. Some nice red fruit and, you know, you can have some of that on a diet, which is even better. Yeah, I think this would be a really good... And um, by the way, if you're not on a diet, you can have <laughs> just as much. So, knock yourself out. Just as much? Yeah, not, not twice as much, just as much. Oh, just as much. If you're not on a diet. If you're not on a diet. You can drink it. Oh, yeah, you can drink the whole bottle. Is that what you're saying? I Why thought, not? That goes without saying. I drink the whole, whole bottle, Italian or not. Well, yeah. I don't count anymore. I don't me either. I don't um, So, as I mentioned. <laughs> you keep people out of my garbage can. <laughs> they don't need to see my bottles. I'm just you kidding. Recycle, you recycle. My recycle. Well, yes. Come on, BPC. <laughs> All right, so as I mentioned, uh, Chardonnay is one of those grapes that actually can go dry. Yeah. 
Um, now be careful, you know, some Chardonnays are going to be, especially like in the lower end Chardonnays, mm -hmm. are kind of still a little sweet because they have to be just trendy, they have to be yeah. kind of like, you know, easy yeah. for people. So usually a little bit of residual sugar, which is a term you'll hear, residual sugar will mm -hmm. go like a long way. Yes. So a good way to actually um, gauge whether it's going to be, it's going to have residual sugar or not, is looking at the alcohol content. Mm -hmm. Um, so this one is coming from Italy, so it's old world, so you're kind of, you kind of assume it's going to be on the dry side of things, mm -hmm. because that's what they do. But if you drink Chardonnay from another area, try to look at that alcohol content. If it's like, you know, 13, 13.5, chances are it's going to be on the dry side. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's less than that, it probably still has a little bit of residual sugar, yeah. which makes you kind of just perceive it like easier and all that, mm -hmm. you know? So I picked this wine, which is from uh, Masseria Fratasi, and it's coming from Campania in Italy. So it's kind of very unusual. Campania yeah. is down in the south. Usually you don't hear about much about like Italian Chardonnay. No, not. And this no. is an old, uh, an old winery started in like 1779. So even before these guys. Come on. 100 years on ours. Yeah, they have 100 years on them. Over, yeah. And uh, so you, if you see the label, CHY and then some numbers. CHY is the Chardonnay and 890 is the elevation in meters. So it's high altitude Chardonnay coming from Campania, which is super cool. It's actually one of like the tallest vineyards in Italy. You're looking at roughly like 2,800 feet or so. Oh, wow. You know, and Campania is on the coast. I mean, really, yeah. you climb up pretty yep. fast. Yep. Uh, they get snow like end of August or so, you know, September. Holy cow. So, um, so, so super cool. cool weather grape. It's, uh, you know, that's kind of an area where Falangina would have been from. Um, so, I mean, there's like winemaking dating back to the Greek, Greek times. Um, and times. it's, um, <laughs> it's a very small production on this wine, which is really cool. See, it's just a little bit of, uh, of oak, about five months of neutral oak, just to kind of polish it. Yep. And a very unusual style of Chardonnay. And I think that's why I loved that wine the first time I tried it. It was just uh, like nothing I had ever tried. Yeah, this is a really cool, like right away on the nose, you get those, um, like it was mentioned earlier, floral notes. Floral, I, I get, get some kind of like citrus. Yeah, um, oh yeah, I get orange. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like orange peel orange. or like. Yeah, I get the zest of an orange. And, uh, and the wine is just nice and dry. And it's, like I said, small production. It's about 5,000 bottle a year. 5,000 yeah, bottles. Yeah, that's not, that's not. And it's here tastings. Alcohol is 13%. And it's super high acid. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, really high acid. And that's what tells me, by the way, it's very, very hard to find notes on residual sugar if you go online. And there is no rule in the US to actually label wine per se. So right, yeah. they're not required to put anything mm -hmm. on the labels online. So you really have to kind of use your judgment and, you know, the acidity content and the perception you'll find on your, on your tongue is really what's going to drive you. So a little bit of education, you know, you know about some grapes that are going to be dry, some areas that are going to be drier. But at the end of the day, you can look at alcohol and you can just use your, your best judgment. Yeah, um, this is really high acid. So. My mouth just pools with oh, saliva. Oh, this is like super is that, cool. Is that, it's probably ignited a lot of appetites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, is super, it definitely super cool. just... You know, and uh, the notes that I read was actually suggesting to have this with uh, dry cheese, like salty dry cheese, yeah. uh, as well as seafood, which of course makes yeah. sense. And that little note of orange zest or something yeah, like that is orange. just so cool. It's just so unusual. Like, I, I do put that in my glass and I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't put that as Chardonnay. No, the, it has some of the body that Chardonnay does. Like there's a little bit of weight to it, but it definitely just that acid and like in the orange zest is throws you off a little bit. It's a really cool wine and also Chardonnay out of Italy itself. That's cool that's in right. itself. You know, the whole trifecta. Yeah. Just that's cool, what I do. cool, cool, cool. <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> so. I say cool a lot, I guess. <laughs> so that's great wine, um, something different, you know, and yeah, if you're um, if you're like me and you want to try something different and want to branch out, 
And this is definitely like a place great to Great for those unoaked wine, unoaked Chardonnay drinkers Exactly. I mean, if well. you're a Sauvignon so, Blanc drinker, you'll love oh, that. You if will you're an unoaked that. Chardonnay drinker, yes. you'll love it. And if you're just kind of adventurous, you'll love you'll it. You'll love it. So, <laughs> you're you know, gonna love it. What's not to love? <laughs> um, should we go into the red? Yeah, okay. red wine. So red wine, of course, is usually fermented a little bit drier. Mm -hmm. um, side note though, I was reading that, you know, Rieslings, everybody thinks Riesling is sweet. But in some cases, you can actually find like some bone dry Rieslings. My and favorite. so you can find some Trocken in Germany, in Alsace, you can find some dry Rieslings. So don't be intimidated by those if you're on one of those diets, you know, and you're trying to cut carbs and cut sugar. Because those are like bone dry. Yeah. So they, there are worth things that into them. smell like a straight up rubber tire. Like you are at a tire store. Like, like you just uh, refilled your uh, your diesel your di yeah. truck. Yeah. They call it petrol. And I just love that. <laughs> yeah. The sweet smell of petrol in the morning. Right. So, yeah. um, so we're going to start with the uh, Grignano uh, Pietro Maggio. So this is a um, affordable, super Tuscan, yeah. good for like everyday drinking. Grignano is a very old winery, very, very old, um, 15th century type thing. And this is a blend of San Giovese, it's about 50% San Giovese, which is one of those grapes that will go dry. And the rest of the blend is 25% uh, Cab, 25% Merlot, therefore the, the Super Tuscan. Yep. Uh, it doesn't see any oak, it's um, basically the malolactic fermentation goes into a glass lined cement vat and then bottled. I think it's just, it's a fantastic little wine, it's a great little value, and on the dry side of things again, yeah. you know, so great for like your everyday Yeah, this dishes. is an everyday bottle, an everyday food wine to me. Um, so of course if you're on a, on a keto diet, you're not yeah. gonna have lasagna, you're not gonna have, you know, the pasta and You can do that. zoodles. Zoodles. Yeah, you take a zucchini. And you turn it into okay. noodles, yeah, and sure. then you got pasta. You can do that. You can do your sauce. tomato sauce and your red sauce. I mean, this is like this calls for red sauce. You can yeah. still do your meatballs, right? Yes. So yeah, no breadcrumbs. With like no breadcrumbs, but you can still do you meatballs. You can still do a meatball. And just have your tomato sauce. Yeah, there you go. Be super Perfect. happy. Throw on some zucchini noodles. So San Giovese is one of those grapes. <laughs> Nebbiolo is one of the grapes that usually goes like really dry as well. So. There's, there's definitely a lot of options if you're on a diet where you're trying to cut your sugars yeah. and your carbs. Yeah. You know, look for dry wines and those grapes will kind of guide you into that direction, Merlot, Cabernet. I feel like the Merlot in this too still drives some, some of that fruit. Like maybe they are craving a little bit more on the sweeter side. This is very dry, but it still has some like fruity notes to it that could still please it does, it, uh, that kind of, I want something with fruit. To my wine. You know, it's got some of that cherry that you would uh -huh. expect out of yeah. Tuscany, yeah. that dried yeah. cherry. But it also has like a, a riper component mm -hmm. I think, to it, which makes it super yeah. interesting. Yeah, I really like this wine. Again, the value is incredible for just an everyday red wine bottle with your dinner. I can't beat it. See, I'm usually a one bottle a night kind of guy. Yeah. Something like that. I mean, maybe two bottles. Bottle yeah, this is definitely. I mean, you, you can might just open another one, do right? It, right? And what nice is it? Nice piece of cheese. Thirteen five. You only, can do it. Only. Two two bottles. It's all Thirteen good. five. It's all good. Especially if I don't have to work the next day. Then yeah. I'm getting Run older, it. so it's yeah. just you know. That's right. So you're only a two bottle and I yeah. ate. <laughs> um, this is great. That's actually tasting awesome. Yeah, I I do really enjoy that wine. The value is, it over delivers. For that price. And uh, and so Chianti would be one of those two if you're ever thinking about you know other options. San Giovese, so Chianti yeah. um, would work in that category. So don't don't think that you're like boxed in if you're on one of those diets or if you're trying to cut carbs. There's plenty of options in the world of wine. You know you just have to kind yeah. of expand your horizons a little bit. And we so. can do that here. Probably <laughs> stay away from Moscato if you're on a diet. It's just not the best. That's thing. not that's no. not going to do it for you. Uh, last but not least, that is the Chateau yes, de l'Escour. I'm very excited for this one. I really so, like this wine. And I, uh, I'm excited about that too because I yeah. haven't tried that in a while and I was kind of waiting for it to come around. We're still in 2015. It's a Saint Emilion Grand Cru. Um, I was reading that actually the winery started in, well, not the winery, but the estate was founded in 1341. Holy so that God. kind of takes the cake, really. But the grapes were not planted until the 19th century. Okay. So. So um, old lands. 
but a lot of land, a yeah. castle with a moat and a forest around it. Of course, it. they do have a uh, moat. Of course, I mean everybody <laughs> needs a moat. Um, That's my dream. Today, the estate is uh, 18 acres of planted vineyards. Um, oh, and quickly before I forget, uh, that Pietro Maggio, that Grignano is also organic. Just you know. Ta -da. Organic. That's uh, that was it. Next. <laughs> For our so Saint Emilion Grand Cru. So you're on the right bank mm -hmm. of Bordeaux, where Merlot rules, and Merlot is one mm -hmm. of those varietals that will go dry. So you're looking at 80% uh, Merlot, and then 10% Cabernet Sauvignon, 10% Cabernet Franc. Uh, very old estate, like we mentioned. Uh, the average year of the vines on this particular wine is about 45 years although okay. they have some plantings that are still 100 years old mm -hmm. so super cool mm -hmm. um roughly about like you know 16 12 to 16 months in oak french okay. oak yeah and um this is uh a few years old now and it's finally starting to come around softening up a little bit uh the reviews i read was like a 91 point and saying you know drink after 2021 so i think yeah. we're getting close with a little bit of air it's a little still, bit of decanting yeah you know? i think a little bit of air definitely i mean this is another wine i say this all the time but it's one that is really good to bust out the decanter and use it because yeah. i know mine collects dust every once in a while and so this is a great bottle um a great excuse to bust that out and the it's very reasonably priced we, we should have a play date for decanters. So we should, we can share. Because mine is Yeah. Yeah. Like, da, 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 da. I, have a, I got gifted a very nice decanter and I only can use it. I used it like a week ago. Oh, that's good. Okay. That's better than me. Anyway, yes. <laughs> so, anyways, like fantastic wine as well. Um, age worthy. Yeah. But drinkable yeah. now. Yeah, a little absolutely. bit of yeah. help. Little, little air. Um, definitely like your big dinner kind of wine, your yes. steak, your. Yep. Um, and Merlot mainly, which is going to make it friendly for yeah. diet. This so. is a great, I mean, on keto too, you're eating steak and a vegetable, like your, your red meat and your grain. That's keto, and this will definitely hold up really well to those big cuts of red meat um, beautifully. I think all these wines are great for any stage of your diet meal. I would agree. Um, or just chilling on your couch and having a glass of wine mm -hmm. on your diet. So yeah, um, again, these wines, now we do have four. So if you buy all four, the wines are 15% off and individually they are 10% off per bottle. Um, awesome value wines. It's been a minute since I've had, that's not true, I have, it's been a minute since I've had a wine that has over delivered like this for these values. I mean, they're, they're crazy, crazy good price. You're welcome, Boise. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I do. You find them French day gold, in and day out. Italy gold, you know? yeah, you bring them on over. Yeah, they're really so. good. So anyway, as our motto goes, Michael, do you know our motto? I've been testing everyone. Just refresh my memory. Life is too short to drink bad wine. I agree. Oh, Cheers. he agrees. <laughs> you better agree. Talk about diet. I mean, I was, at, I was at the cabin this weekend. Uh -huh. I had a can of the confit mm -hmm. that I brought back from France. Duck. 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 The quain quain, you know? Yeah, the quain quain. The quain quain. <laughs> <laughs> With the French accent, it goes yeah. quain quain. <laughs> and it was like duck confit in a can that I bring back from France. And so, I mean, it's all like in fat and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, just yeah. delicious. I opened the can because it was only like four years expired. But I figured it's just not going to kill me. Four years ago. Yeah, I, I, took a, I took a chance. I took a chance. And here yeah. I am tonight. Oh, you're still alive. Yeah. But that's it's because the wine I had diet. wine. Yeah. I it's had the Bordeaux wine with diet. it. Yeah, that's it. Just, you know, comfy, red Bordeaux. I was good to heaven. go. And I was up in the mountains. Man, life well, was good. four years expired. Yeah. Don't try that on milk.
Ha 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 